Hey folks, this is Kalani. If you haven't noticed yet, the Island Expeditions feature had quite a few changes made to it in patch 8.1. Some of these were expected for quite a while, but others were dropped in without any warning. Let's have a look at how Island Expeditions are doing after their first real update since the game went live. The big one is definitely the change to how rewards are calculated from every island you run. Before 8.1, you would have to kill monsters to fill up an invisible loot table, and every monster had a chance to reward you with loot unique to their creature type. If you wanted pirate loot, you had to kill pirates and hope for the best. That's all gone out the window, and the way rewards are calculated now is completely different. All you have to do is complete the island expedition and you have a chance to get a reward from any loot table of the monster that spawned on the island. You don't have to tag them, you don't have to kill them. If Mogu spawned somewhere on your island, you have a chance to get Mogu loot. The same goes for every single creature type, that's a pretty huge change, and as expected it comes with some pros and cons. The good thing about this change is that islands are now way easier to understand, to the point of you don't really have to understand anything anymore, you just finish your island and you hope you get some cool loot. There's nothing else but that, so your goals are very simplistic, finish the island, preferably on a higher difficulty, and achieving victory. Do those two things and you should get some random loot every few runs. This also means that no matter who you are or who you group with, everyone who queues into an island expedition is going to be on the same page. Finish the island as quickly and smoothly as possible. There's no divide between the AP farmers and the rare farmers, everyone is in the same boat from here on out. So those are the good things that have come from this change, but sadly it also means that there's zero complexity in islands anymore. You have practically no choices to make and you can't really have any positive effect on your potential loot drops. It's all down to RNG now, the only thing you can do is clear your islands faster. No complexity, no choice or agency, no real secrets either. That also means that it doesn't really matter what monsters are on your island, because you're going to get random loot from a wide variety of mobs anyway. Before 8.1 it was pretty exciting to come across some of the rarer mob types, but now they're just another monster to trample over. Islands lack any form of depth now, which honestly makes them a little more boring and even though there seems to be a higher chance to get any form of loot now, I find myself getting very tired of islands a lot faster than I did previously. With all that being said, I definitely seem to be getting more loot these days. This little hole is just from the last 5 islands I ran. Every single island gave me either a handful of items like pets, rep tokens or a BOE weapon, or a bag of doubloons. I never walked away empty handed. Obviously, your mileage may vary. Have you been seeing more rewards from islands recently? Let me know in the comments section below. Another change to islands in 8.1 was to monster spawns. Now you'll find mobs are more spread out and clumped together instead of covering the entire island. That sounded a bit weird, but they're clumped together and then spread out amongst the island in their little clumps. You won't find as many just walking around in the middle of nowhere. This makes it a bit slower to gather up a lot of monsters to AoE grind down, which also seems to be a bit harder now, by the way. I'm not sure if mobs hit harder, have more health, or it's just that their new monsters introduced have a lot of unforgiving abilities, but I'm sweating a little bit more with large monster pools. Even though it slows down things just a tiny bit, I actually enjoy this change quite a lot. It totally makes sense for a pack of wolves to stick together, or a cluster of spiders to all hide around the same little chest of Azerite. It definitely feels more like packs of monsters, instead of trash mobs just to fill in the empty spaces. It's also a lot easier to get around now, you can skirt between packs if you're careful and you can actively avoid anything you don't want to pull. In that regard you do have a little bit of choice when running your islands, but the choice is to avoid the pain in the rear mobs and go for the easier sources of Azerite. It's not really related to rewards at all anymore. A few new events were also introduced, the Azerite Extractor and Azerite Raptures. I think both of these events are nice additions, honestly anything new is always good with this type of content. Content. The extractor should be more valuable though I think, right now you get more from it by letting the opposite faction take it over so you can take it back. There's no real reward for defending it and holding it for your faction for a prolonged period of time. I would also like to see the rapture events continually spawn monsters instead of just in smaller waves, but maybe that's just me. I'm looking forward to seeing what other new events the dev team can cook up for the islands. 
Two new maps were thrown into the mix as well, and as I said with events, any new stuff is always welcome, and maps are perhaps the largest piece of new content that we could ever hope to see for island expeditions. I love both maps' themes, they have good layouts which work well with islands, and the only downside to adding new maps is that maybe we'll now have to wait longer for certain maps to come back around. I wish they would expand the list of maps available at once, and would probably prefer if all maps were active at the same time to really ramp up that random factor. If you could zone into any any map which could spawn any monsters, I think that would be a step forward. These are supposed to be different every time we hop in, yet we're limited to three maps at a time which have certain fixed monster spawns. Why hype this up as randomly generated and then hack off half of the randomness? If anything needed more RNG in this game right now, and I can't believe I'm saying that, but it would be how islands are generated. And then there's also a new reward tacked onto the weekly AP reward, the treasure maps. I think this is a great idea. Idea, but it was executed in a really weird way. The follower system in BFA is a shell of its former self. There's no excitement or fun attached to it anymore. I can understand why they would want to inject some more content into the mission table so players might actually pay attention to it more than once a month, but I kind of don't like this approach for two reasons. Number one, these treasure maps could have had so much potential for minigames, special islands, unique scenarios, or almost anything else you can think of. And number two, it's a bit late, isn't it? If you wanted followers to mean something, tying in a raid cache with Uldia or something else within the first few months of BFA would have been better, surely. These maps could have unlocked solo scenario missions on special loot islands, or unique island maps, or even started off a little scavenger hunt which ends in some fancy reward. A good chunk of gold, some artifact power, or maybe even rewards from the island loot table. Funnily enough, all of that is actually available from the mission table treasure map missions. So it could have been done, but it would have taken a little more effort and dev time compared to this iteration. They are definitely worth doing, there's no doubt about that. These maps can give you missions for gold, AP, or even some rare rewards from the island mission table, as I said before. You can get them once per week, per character, so if you have no other reason to want to get your weekly island quest done, you should maybe consider doing it for this treasure map mission. I'll be running most of my alts through their islands to see what goodies I can get my hands on. I love that there's a new reward tied to the weekly, but I do think it could have been expanded upon a little further and made into something completely different and it would have been quite exciting, probably, doing that weekly just to get a map to go do something else. If it didn't tie into missions, if it was actually something that you did as a character, I think that would have been a way better pull to get people to try islands again rather than just something based off of the mission table. And if all else fails, you get absolutely zero loot from all of the islands you run, at least we now have the doubloon vendor. This chap has quite a few things on offer, and all he asks in return is hundreds of your hard-earned doubloons. I think some of this stuff is a little pricey for what it is. A hundred doubloons for a rep token? That's daylight robbery, that is. The rep isn't worth that much grinding, no sir. The parrot hats are cool, as some of the toys and albatross mount, but farming that many doubloons is going to take a very, very long time, especially when you can't really do anything to increase your rate of acquiring them, or even guarantee you'll see any at all when you finish an island. A vendor is a great idea, but some of the prices might need adjusting, and I would also love to see a wider variety of rewards from the island loot table itself, which maybe rotate every week. That way you don't have to rely solely on RNG to pick up something you want. If you gather enough doubloons, and oh boy, I really envy your patience if you do, and you wait long enough, you should be able to buy anything from the island loot table. Oh, and by the way, just in case you actually want something from this vendor, go check your little research thing on your war campaign boat. There's a research option in there, which will help you get more doubloons from islands. You can thank me later. I think that covers pretty much everything that was new in patch 8.1 or that changed in island expeditions recently. Overall, I think these changes have made islands more accessible and less cumbersome to think about. Everyone should be aiming for the same thing when queuing up, so you shouldn't see any huge divides between random party members anymore, which is definitely a good thing. There's more rewards for playing islands now than there has been since the start of BFA, so if you're looking for a reason to actually run them, I'm sure you can find one if you look hard enough. I honestly think this is how islands should have been from when BFA first launched, and if they had it this way, we wouldn't even be considering the negatives of losing complexity or choices. In fact, if this version of islands was their base, I think it would have been much easier to go up from here and to make islands a fantastic feature. 
but they've had to spend so much time patching it up and changing it to a point where people actually want to play it for a little bit at least every week and where they can actually understand how the rewards work that I just feel like they're going to be behind for every patch from here on out. And the changes have left islands a little boring to run. There just isn't that much excitement to be had from a random scenario that isn't all that random where you can't affect your potential rewards and you're encouraged to go as fast as possible because that's the only thing that matters anymore. Which brings me to a question I've been asking a lot recently. Where does this feature go from here? What is the future of island expeditions? I wouldn't be too surprised if islands took a back seat going forward. After the Battle of Desert Alor, we're all heading down to Nazjatar. There's going to be a little bit of story in between there where island expeditions could actually really flourish, but the dev team would have to really sell it. Nagra are going to be showing up on our shores, causing all sorts of trouble so they could try and do something special with islands while that's all going on. Unique maps that aren't on the normal rotation, Naga raids on islands we're exploring. I hope they do something, because after we get down to Nazjatar, I don't think islands will really feel all too relevant anymore. We're already where we want to be and we're fighting a common enemy again. It would feel a bit weird to hop up back to Zandala or Kulturas and go out sailing for the 159th time. I think the main focus should be in Nazjatar for that section of content, but if we can come up with some new island maps that actually fit in with the story of Nazjatar, then that might end up working. But then we still come back to the fact that a lot of players just don't want to deal with island expeditions unless your guild has a minimum artifact level set for the next raid. Then you probably hate islands anyway because you'll be farming them day in day out, especially without an artifact fact knowledge until season 2 actually releases. But either way, I'm really interested to see where Blizzard will take this specific piece of content because I'm not really sure what they can do to make it more enticing without changing huge sections of how it currently works. I would love to see an exploration or story mode for islands where you can take a few friends or even a few NPCs and just go exploring one of these maps, keep the monster spawns, keep the treasures and loot, add in a few puzzles, more caves, more dungeons, places we can actually explore, and remove the opposite faction. Get rid of the timer and just let us explore for once. If you have to slap a timer on there, make it something like 10 minutes or 15 minutes before the alliance shows up. When you hit that timer, have waves of alliance start spawning more and more often to get you to go back to your ship so you can haul away your booty. Having the entire expedition be a race might be my least favourite aspect of islands, but those are just my thoughts. As I said, I'm curious to see where Blizzard takes it and how much effort they actually dedicate to keeping islands updated with new events, new maps, and new monsters. What do you think will happen to island expeditions in the future? Do you think they will add different versions or modes to let us explore? Or do you just think they will add in new maps every now and then and do the bare minimum to keep it relevant? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.